The lovely Carmen Centrix tagged me in a fun tag video and I thought um, I've got a day off today I thought I'd give it a little bit of a go um, I'm just sitting here in my lovely silk sheets just uh, thinking about perfumes and um, <laughs> realizing that a lot of this is going to have to be editing, uh, edited in afterwards I haven't done that since I did my uh, special kind of pre-wedding video about La Belle Cerici, which is one of these that will come up here and uh, yeah so it's possible that I'll film this and then it'll take me ages to actually getting around to doing the editing because I'm gonna have to add in a ton of pictures to this but it's also super fun and it means I get to talk about some really old perfumes I haven't thought about for quite a while which is going to be super cool so I'm going to go through the questions and answer them as well as I possibly can so this it starts with how I got into perfume YouTube. So I was looking for a review of something. I can't at all remember what it is, but I'm absolutely sure that it would have been something that wasn't very popular, that was maybe quite cheap, that people weren't really talking about. It, it would be one that there weren't a huge amount of reviews on, on Fragrantica. So I probably would have searched looking um, on Google for like blogs and that kind of thing. And I came across Soaky London. Um, I, she often comes up for, I mean, that might just be because I live in London um, and maybe uh, some of the English uh, creators come up first uh, if you're searching in the UK. But she's got really, she's got a really wide range of designer and affordable perfumes on her both blog and on YouTube. And I'm I'm pretty sure I I watched every single one of her videos. Like I I basically found her. I watched all of her videos. I thought they were really fun. Um, I didn't really think much more of it, but I also kind of realised quite quickly that we'd had we didn't really have the same taste. Um, I probably blind bought a few things that she suggested, and then just all I definitely got some samples of some of her favourites, and I was like, oh okay. So I really enjoy watching her videos. I still watch her now, but we have very, very different tastes in, and we smell things really differently, I'd say, Soki and I. Um, but I still love her content. I still watch her channel. And uh, I like that she always does the kind of affordable stuff in the designer ranges, you know? Uh, she doesn't only do niche. She doesn't only do the most popular designers. She kind of covers everything like 100 quid and under. So yeah, that was, that was the first person I really was watching. So the second question is, who was the first person I started watching? Well, oh, okay, well, that's that's Soki. Um, <laughs> actually, I think Carmen laughed when she did that. She's sort of the same question twice, Carmen. But um, So I would say what I'll do is I'll talk about the person I found afterwards, and that was Sarah Mays. So Sarah Mays is one of my absolute favourite YouTubers. I really enjoy watching her. I love how passionate she is about um, perfumes. I think even though there are definitely some things we smell differently and we have quite different tastes because there's notes that she loves that I really, really don't like at all and vice versa, I would say. She has a very wide taste. She covers a lot of things and it's just really fun to watch her. I just really like Sarah. So she was one of the first people that I, uh, after Soki, I subscribed to and kind of sort of fell in love with. And I have stayed very much with Sarah. I, I absolutely get so excited when I see a new video from her. Um, so the third one is who influences you the most? And I have to say, I mean, it has to be the person who influenced me to start my own channel, and that is Ruth Ann McKinnon. Um, I imagine a lot of people who watch my channel also watch Ruth, uh, Ruth Ann, I should say, because... She also does affordable stuff um, and actually full on cheap stuff. She's like me. She's an absolute bargain hunter. She's not interested in really expensive perfumes. Um, and I, like, I have to admit, I, do, I get I, there are people that I watch who tend to do, you know, everyone will come out with the same video about the same thing at the same time. And there are people within that group that I do watch. There's some that I don't because they do too much designer, too much niche, and I'm just not interested in expensive perfumes. I'm definitely not excited about the popular niche brands, like because I think generally speaking, they're too popular to be massively interesting, if you see what I mean, if they're that mass appealing. And I don't, I just get a bit bored. So I, <laughs> Ruth Ann never bores me. She always talks about really random, crazy stuff. She'll talk about old Avon stuff. She'll talk about um, Elizabeth Arden. She'll talk about vintage stuff. She'll talk about drugstore stuff. She'll talk about Antonio Banderas and, you know, celebrity sense. And, you know, she's really got a really wide taste. Um, 
And she's, or like me, she's not interested. If it's a £300 a bottle, even if the bottle's pretty, even if it's really sweet and tasty, she's not interested. And I, I couldn't find many people on YouTube that were like that. Um, she was one of, and she also doesn't show her face. And I thought, oh, do you, can you, can you just show the bottles? Because I love looking at the bottles. Um, I also get a little bit, I'm, and this is no insult to anyone. I'm just saying this is my very personal taste for watching YouTube. I really like videos where it's the bottles because sometimes I have to keep rewinding because if someone has, you know, they're talking for ages about a scent, they show the bottle at the beginning, they have a little bit of text that says what it is and then it's gone. And I'm like, if I look around and do something else and I, I, or I want to look it up on Fragrantica, I really like being able to see the bottle. I'd as much as I love seeing people's faces occasionally, like I really like faceless uh, YouTube videos. I don't know. I it makes it feel like it's more about the product than it is the person. And uh, as much as again, I really love that personality coming through by listening to people talk. Maybe that's what it is. I love podcasts. I love spoken word. I love audiobooks. I absolutely just love listening to people talk about things that they're passionate about. So. Ruth Ann, I found her and I was like, okay, I get it. I c maybe I could do this as well because Ruth Ann's in America. There's stuff that she can get that I that I can't, and there's things that you can get in the UK that probably Ruth Ann can't get. So I was like, well, I've got loads of cheap perfumes I love. I'm just going to start my own channel, and that is how I got here. And I have amazing people like Carmen now tagging me in things, which is really exciting. Um, and yeah, I mean, and I also. I, fa I found Paolo Bianca quite late, which I was surprised about because the algorithm is really weird on YouTube and they really want me to watch Jeremy Fragrance and they really want me to watch uh, Paulina Shaw and um, uh, Gabby Loves Perfume. That That's who they want me to watch. No matter who I watch, that's who they advertise to me. And then Paolo Bianca came up when I was doing a Christmas search. And I was so happy to find her because uh, that's another person that I really enjoy now. And I talk to her quite a lot in my comments. And like, this, it's just, it, she really likes sweet scents. So she doesn't influence me like quite as much because I know that like we have quite different tastes. But she influences me in that she also is a, a very popular YouTuber who doesn't always have her face in things. And she shows the bottles and I just love it. So yeah, I mean there's there's loads there's too many people who inspire me on here for me to talk about them all to be honest but anyway um i should get on with this this is the problem i've already been talking for nearly 10 minutes and i'm only on question four um who has the most similar taste to me uh that nobody <laughs> uh, there are definitely a few of my subscribers who um i'm pretty sure have very similar taste to me but in terms of people on youtube i've never found anyone where i know i could just blind buy something and i'd be safe um <laughs> So I think that, um, I mean, if I had a, if I had to think about it, I've had the best luck buying stuff blind buy wise when I've been influenced by Sarah Mays, Ruth McKinning and, and Shana J. But I've very much had to learn about the differences between our noses. So like Shana J likes much more floral stuff than me. She like likes stuff that I find very sharp, white floral kind of, to me can lean into the kind of cleaning product or like real screechy old school white flowers. But I can I can kind of get with her on the musky and the more soapy um, kind of clean girl fragrances. So I've had quite a lot of success trying out things that she suggested um when it comes to kind of the clean girl aesthetic and kind of soapy perfumes and like things you can wear in offices that kind of thing um sarah mays as i said i the the massive part where we kind of split apart sarah mays and i is that she really really loves vanilla like loves i think it might be her favorite note um totally separate when it comes to certain things that i think are absolutely vanilla with a hint of something else and i think that she can sense that in a different way because she's so used to wearing vanilla all the time so i i cannot blind buy things um that sarah might describe as uh, like a chocolate perfume without checking <laughs> on fragrantica to see where the vanilla is in the mix but i have a really really good luck with sarah when it comes to um what's it called uh like kind of fruity juicy perfumes that don't have loads of vanilla she is the reason that i bought the key by justin bieber and i love that perfume i think it's brilliant she's the reason i bought modern princess from lonvin which is absolutely my favorite apple perfume um and so 
I think that like when it comes to the fruitier side of things and maybe like tea and that kind of thing I think we're much kind of closer on the things that we like um, but yeah anything with vanilla in I'm just like I can't anyone who loves vanilla that's not just Sarah anyone who loves vanilla in perfumes I have to be really careful about blind buying things that might be similar to that um, so and then oh Ruth Ann well yeah uh, Ruth Ann wears so much perfume uh, and she can wear really strong really vintage perfumes um, but I'm I'm really safe with her with like citrusy perfumes and skin scents and musks that kind of thing we have a lot of similar tastes when it comes to musks so um, I, I think she's my go-to person when it comes to talking about musk I, I just think that she she is so passionate about it she wears them all the time she absolutely gets through bottles after bottles of musk perfumes so i kind of she's my she's my lady for trusting when it comes to musk you know and again i think she um she likes vanilla and that kind of thing but i she's quite good at pointing out when it's a very very vanilla heavy scent in the, it and smells those things in quite a similar way to me so yeah i mean again but when it's like vintage when it's strong when there's patchouli uh, that that's not that's not going to work for me so like i said there's not really anyone because i am so fussy um skin sense for fuss pots that's you know that's that's the thing um when did i start wearing perfume mm, i think i was probably wearing body spray when i was in primary school so that would have been like under 10 but i i can't actually remember when i started wearing perfume i'm sure i was smelling um, other people's perfumes but my mum did not wear perfume uh, my mum gets headaches really easily she's never been i don't have like scent memories of my mother outside of like the fairy laundry detergent and the comfort um fabric conditioner you know that's that's what my kind of family generally smelt like <laughs> <laughs> they just smell you know maybe a bit fresh laundry maybe that's why I love fresh laundry so much there weren't any other kind of scents masking that you know she just gets headaches really easily so she never wore perfume um she probably hated everything that I had because next <laughs> the next question so this is going to be picture madness so what perfume did you wear growing up let me see um oh my goodness so let's start it's so random i'm going to do a bit of a list so max factor le jardin and le jardin de more you can still buy them i sniffed them recently in a pharmacy and i hated them with a burning passion but i was i mean and i don't really have much memory i i remember the bottles i remember exactly what the bottles looked like felt like i remember thinking that the one in the black bottle the jardin de more i remember thinking i was very kind of um, mature and set I mean we're talking about like 1990 or something here um, <laughs> and so I, I thought I was very mature I thought I was really cool I was like oh this is my like lady perfume you know and the other one in the pink bottle that's just kind of an everyday thing I find them both horrific now um, <laughs> or at least the ones in the pharmacy I didn't like the smell of so that's that's those I think those must be early 90s they might even be late 80s I'm not sure um, there was a lot of late 80s, early 90s impulse body spray. So there was like hint of musk. That's early 90s. Free spirit. Everyone wore that in like 1992. Later on, there was like um, O2 it was like a big deal from impulse body spray. That was like, but that was like 97. So I was born in 82. So by the time that came out, it was kind of right at the end of the body spray times for me. I was wearing, I had the body spray of this, but I was wearing Le Mans by Coty um, when I was very very young I had the body spray my gran used to buy this for me this is like a really toned down easy to wear version of Chanel number no. five a bit more floral bit sweeter not quite as sharp not quite as mossy soapy oh I mean the memories it just I mean the thing is because my grandmother used to buy this for me she didn't wear it herself but because she bought it for me this now makes me think of her and I will have this in my collection forever um, because you know she's not here anymore but I get to smell this and think about her um, and it is like a soapy flowery slightly rose forward classic perfume it's actually surprisingly easy to wear that one um so lamont i mean i i had that one and i loved it um and then let's see what else was there this is going to be like a really long bit because i really want people to comment if they remember any of these random things that i had so 
I had oh I forgot to get the bottle out I've got far I had far away in 1994 when it came out from Avon and I absolutely loved it back then I didn't have it in my collection I only had one bottle of it and then I didn't have it in my collection until like last year and I'm obsessed with it and I love far away and I'm really annoying I did I'm annoyed I didn't get the bottle out but I'll put a picture of it I've got a 50 ml bottle of that that I'm already burning through. I've got a pen spray, which is one I started with. I bought that pen spray. I loved it. My husband went mad for it. And so I bought a um, 50 ml bottle and I will definitely continue wearing and buying that perfume. I really like it in cold weather. It's like a warm floral with like a custardy vanilla dry down. Um, it's quite ylang ylang heavy. It's got a slightly tropical vibe to it. I'm obsessed. I love that perfume. Also smells like plastic doll's head. So it's an acquired taste. Um, so let's see. What else did I have from Avon? Because I... This I was so excited because when I started thinking about this, I was really trying to look into it and I was really trying to think back to the bottle shapes that I had when I was little. And so I thank Carmen for reminding me about something that is so hard to find anything about on the Internet. So I had a couple of bottles from the Comfort Sense range from Avon. One was called Clean Cotton. That was like 1996. And one was called Stone Wash Blue. And I think that was probably around about the same time. I loved those perfumes. Um, hopefully I've got pictures up here so you'll be able to look at them. Um, I can't find information about the notes. I don't know what was in them, but obviously one smelled like clean cotton and one smelled like a kind of clean denim-y, again, like a laundry cottony smell. It's not really a surprise that I love laundry smells, really, is it? I mean, I, I'm kind of looking at my history and going, ah, oh, okay, I don't have any memory of wearing these perfumes until I saw the bottles and I thought oh yeah and I could smell it I could smell this kind of sweet clean laundry fresh smell <laughs> and I'm like oh my god if they if they bought these out now they'd be doing an absolute bomb with them because they'd be so popular and in my opinion Avon used to make some really interesting scents nowadays all Avon perfumes have an Avon DNA to me and they all have that tar like kind of fake wood smell in them that I can't abide um, but the old perfumes from Avon, they're kind of still pretty classic, I would say. I'm, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> so hopefully you get to see them. And uh, if anyone else remembers them, please tell me because it's just fascinating. Um, so I think those were my main um, Avon perfumes. And then Coty. Coty was the big one when I was at um, comprehensive school. So in the 90s, mid 90s, I wore Wild Musk. Um, now, Wild Musk um, is a Coty perfume that's been around, I think, for a really long I might even be the 70s, probably the 80s. But the 90s version, I think, was slightly different. I think it was a bit easier to wear. It wasn't quite as kind of ambery, quite as old fashioned, but it was very sexy. It was like a kind of mixture between the what well i mean if you can smell the terrible watered down version they've got now but the coty wild musk you have now and skin musk it was kind of like a mixture of those and my boyfriend when i was like 13 loved that perfume like he was obsessed with it um so i used to wear that when when we'd see each other after school you know um i also had exclamation i don't really remember what that smells like i haven't smelled it for a very long time um I had Coty Tribe. Does anyone remember Tribe? Kind of had a weird grapey smell about it. Very strange smell. I've never really smelled anything that quite smells like it. I smell a... Um, I used to have a perfume by... Oh, from Harishuku Lovers that kind of smelled a tiny bit like it, but not really. Um, and I had one called Coty Icky or Issy. And the, I don't remember much about that, except that I loved the bottle. So hopefully, again, I'll have a picture of the bottle so you can, like have a look at this cute little bottle i don't really remember much about what that smelt like i just remember having it the other places i got all my stuff from were was basically the body shop so i'm sure i had white musk at some point but it never really made much of an impression on me my friend um i think my friend Haley wore that one so that was kind of her perfume i had japanese musk and i remember really loving that although again i can't really remember the smell um but i do remember ananya jubilee and i had one called tobacco flower so tobacco flower i remember feeling like that was kind of really rich and special and magical and it was almost a bit much for me 
Yeah, so I really remember clearly the bottle of tobacco flower and I remember thinking it was beautiful and I'd really love to be able to kind of know what that smelled like again. I feel like if I smelt it, I'd, I'd just be transported. But um, so Ananya, really famous, really peachy kind of um, tuberosey, ylangy ylangy, floral. I have Moringa now from the Body Shop, which is which is like a kind of really toned down version of that. But it's it, I think it's similar enough that if you liked Ananya, you'd probably like that. Jubery, Jubery was just a classic. Everyone in the whole Western world had Jubery from the Body Shop. Um, it's kind of mad that they discontinued that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I never, I never. I mean, I assume it stopped selling, but I mean, I feel like maybe it would be quite popular again now because fruity, sweet perfumes, they're kind of back in fashion. But I, I mean, I don't know. And I definitely used to sniff Sun, Moon and Stars by Karl Lagerfeld because someone I knew had that. I don't think I ever had it, but I have real memories of that perfume. So I, I don't know. It's... um. Yeah. Oh, oh, and I had a really weird one called Quiddity, which I don't really remember anything about other than the advertisements in the bottle. And you can't find much about these online. There's there was a blue one, but I think I had a different color. I think there were a few different Quiddities. And I, I, I think I had one that was maybe pink or red or something like that. Um, but I can find pictures of the blue one. So I'll, I'll chuck it up. If anyone reminds this, give me a shout. Uh, remembers it even. Um, do I wear perfume to bed? Not normally. Um, if I do, I wear Skin Musk because Skin Musk is my favourite perfume of all time. Um, I've got loads of stuff on my channel about this if you're interested in it, but it's just the sweetest, most beautiful Skin Musk of all time. It's called Skin Musk Perfect. Perfect. My husband thinks this is just incredibly sexy and comforting. I find it sexy and comforting. It really is a nice one to sleep in. So if I'm going to wear anything, it's only really ever going to be this. I don't wear any other perfume to bed. But what I do do, this is an oil, so I'm going to move it away from my silk sheets, <laughs> is colder weather. I spray twilight on my sheets when I go to bed. So it's not on my skin, but it's on my um on my sheets it smells delicious it's lavender as you can see lavender ylang ylang tonka mainly tonka and and lavender i'd say this one is absolutely delicious oh it's just i mean the thing is i used to be able to smell these from the from the sprayer and it would smell so strong they have definitely 100 percent watered down their body sprays this only lasts for one night now i can barely smell it in the morning they used to, it used to last for days. Um, and then now it's hotter weather, I'm kind of spraying my bed sheets with this clean, fresh laundry and lavender eau fraiche. So I've got this huge bottle of it. I got this from uh, Direct Cosmetics, I think, and it was really cheap. So this one is a really good one. I mean, I wore this quite a lot in the really crazy 40 degree heat of last summer. So I think I'll, I'll wear it again soon. But I do also spray this on my sheets at the moment. Not every night, just every, just when I fancy it, every now and again. Um, so yeah, I'm much more of a bed sheet sprayer than an actual body sprayer, you know, <laughs> body sprayer. Um, so I had to write this down when I was, as soon as I saw the video and, and I knew I'd been tagged, I wrote down the questions and I had to think of these really quickly so I didn't cheat. So if I could only have three without thinking, how what would they be? Um, three perfumes without thinking too much. So... I mean same again it has to be skin mask my favorite perfume of all time so skin mask please don't go everywhere on my bed I've just chosen the little one so they fit in Katy Perry Indie and green tea by Elizabeth Arden now the reason for these three um is just I mean firstly they're the first thing that came to mind secondly they're very easy wears um and thirdly what i realized i mean probably without even thinking about it i can wear these all year there's like never a time of year when it's never too hot or too cold for any of these this one i can wear i mean obviously it's stronger there's definitely more vanilla in this in the in the uh warm months and this one is obviously a bit more heady a bit stronger in the warmer months this one is obviously a bit lighter and a bit um uh more skin scenty in uh cold weather but generally speaking i can wear them any time of year Katy perry's indie to me i know other people perceive it as like a woody musk perfume i i find this very musky yes but it smells like coconut cream to me and i i, I don't know that's just how i perceive that and i love it and I smell people wearing like Santel 33 or the Van Cleef and Arpels uh, sandalwood perfume. And even though this doesn't list sandalwood, I think that's what it smells like. Um, oh, God, it's so, oh, oh, so delicious. Um, delicious, 
just the spa like perfection this is my little travel one i've got massive but i've got massive bottles of of this as well these are just my ones i take to work and this i i have backups of this because as you can see it, i get through it um there's just never a time when green tea isn't beautiful that's a francis kirk de jean uh, perfume by the way just in case people didn't know so it's incredibly good and it's so cheap and all of these are so cheap 10 pounds 10 pounds 10 pounds you know like you don't need to spend a lot of money to spend good on uh, smell good in my humble opinion i mean that's up to you obviously but you don't have to is what i'm trying to say worst perfume i've ever smelt or purchased okay so i absolutely despised sun by jill sanders i thought it smelt like hell on earth cloyingly sweet horribly powdery overwhelming I don't even know that there's jasmine in it but it smelled like a jasmine bomb it actually smells like a more plasticky version of Lulu by Cacharel to me Lulu I never actually bought I smelled that because you can smell that in Superdrug you can smell Lulu in Eden Lulu was like a hell jasmine bomb to me um too sweet too cloying too strong too powdery it was too much of everything and i feel exactly the same way about jill sander sun um i just don't get on with really any of the sun range except for sun delight i think it's called um and that's like a chocolatey perfume and even that smells like plastic they're really weird perfumes um but yeah i hated sun i bought that and people had described it as a as a sun lotion and i was like i can i cannot find a sun lotion in that underneath how strong it is how powdery it is how sweet it is um how floral it is like I, I just i i don't that's a perfume that i genuinely don't understand there's something in it that really upset me <laughs> um uh in the same way that carmen couldn't get on with the latafa one that she, that she tried camera i think it was i had a sample of that and exactly the same this is what helped me realize that i can't wear latafa so Amir Al Oud. I did a review of that, and it's the only per it's the only perfume I've ever reviewed on my channel where I actually had to block people from commenting and like harassing other people who had commented on on my video because people were like so f infuriated, and someone told me I had a broken nose because I didn't like it. But the thing is, Latafa have a note in every single one of their perfumes. They use a chemical in their perfumes. Every single one I've ever smelt. Um, that smells like tar to me so i still haven't worked out if it's a synthetic wood note or if it's a musk note it has to be one of those because it's the only thing that's listed in every single one of the perfumes that i smell it in so it just smells like a burnt rubber burnt wood it just absolutely smells like creosote or tar to me and the that is amil Aoud, that is all that was to me that is all i could smell i knew that there was sugar in it i knew that it was sweet but it was totally overwhelmed by that and then camera i had a little sample of and that was exactly the same pure tar um I realise I've had a couple of Latafa musks. Those were, and I was, I was saying they both smell really woody. They smell the same. They smell like, um, they smell really masculine. I don't understand. And it's because of that note. They just both smell like tar to me. That's all it is. So I can't. I just can't. I don't buy any Latafas anymore. I don't buy any Zaras. They have the same thing. Um, I was horrified by the original Ghost perfume because I, I don't know. I, I that one. It was a mixture of. A vanilla a perfumey vanilla i couldn't bear with a very syrupy peach and a very sweet rose and i bought it thinking it was going to smell like turkish delight because some people told me it smelled like turkish delight and i hated it i, I it made me sick um but it's also really interesting and i i think that's a perfume that's so that's quite um unique so i think other people would really like that one but it just didn't work for me and oh oh my bish from lolita lempica i think that smells like vomit i just hated that <laughs> hated that perfume um i just yeah genuinely it smelled like it's smelled like vomit to me there was a mixture of the champagne with something that smelled like caramel even though it didn't list anything that should be sweet in that perfume i just oh no 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 that i couldn't get on with that um do you like blind buying why or why not i absolutely love blind buying i do know it's not sensible but i do find it really exciting 
And to be honest, I, I don't really have much of a choice but to blind buy things because you don't have the cheaper perfumes in the shops anymore. Companies don't normally make carded samples for the older or cheaper fragrances. Um, and I do try to get samples whenever I can, but considering most perfumes I buy are kind of between like five and 15 pounds um, for each bottle, some of the samples actually end up costing more um, or the same as a full bottle because of the postage and packing that I get charged on top of it. So like if it's three ninety nine to get a, a little sample of something and then I have to pay one ninety nine to get the um the postage, but I can just buy it with some other perfumes when I'm doing a little haul and it's cost seven quid. It just doesn't make any sense to me because I can't sell on that sample, whereas I can sell on a bottle. So yeah, I mean I, I don't really mind it. Um it can be a bit time consuming to sell stuff on but I don't mind doing that the real the downside is that obviously sometimes you waste money but I thank my lucky stars that I have genuinely cheap taste and I, I don't really like expensive perfumes so um it's quite rare that I've ever bought anything expensive that I've then had to sell on um <laughs> yeah I mean it used to be so much easier I could smell like um all of the kind of coaty perfumes, all of those cheaper perfumes, you used to be able to smell them in uh, Boots and Superdrug. And then you used to be able to smell like the, all the Cacharel perfumes, all those kind of not quite designer range, kind of 20 quid a bottle kind of perfumes. You used to be able to smell all of those in like Debenhams. But all of those like Boots and Superdrug now, they kind of have the Ariana Grande and Upwards, those kind of perfumes. They don't normally have stores that are big enough to have the really cheap stuff. They'll have like body sprays and then it goes up to designer and they don't have the stuff in between and then like I mean House of Fraser and Debenhams and all of the big department stores where I used to be able to smell perfumes that were kind of cheap they just they don't exist anymore they've all shut down and like now if I go to John Lewis it's just designer stuff they don't really have you know you're looking at spending 50 quid minimum in John Lewis for any bottle of anything so I tend to do it all online it's just cheaper anyway you know but yeah that was a, a rambly answer to that top five favorite notes so realist I really thought about this musk obviously musk the golden kind the bar soapy kind I'm not really very keen on white musk I don't like a cold crisp cool musk so much I like a warm enveloping creamy musk you know um and then let's see what else tea i love tea perfumes i've got loads of tea perfumes if there's tea in it i quite often like it i've only decluttered a few deep tea perfumes generally speaking and half of the time when i declutter them it's just because they smell like something else i've already got but i love i love a tea note my goodness um sandalwood I don't necessarily love woody perfumes most of the time, but sandalwood is the exception to that rule. I love sandalwood. I think it's gorgeous. If it's done properly, I mean the lush sandalwood, I am absolutely insane for that sandalwood. The woody perfumes that I've got that I consider to be woody generally are sandalwood dominant. Um, and the things that I have that I think smell woody, and some of them don't have sandalwood in, but I think they smell like sandalwood. So, you know, sandalwood is one of the only woods I'm not scared of when I see it. Like if it's cedar wood, I get a bit more nervous because I often don't like cedar. Um, I realized while I was thinking about this, that every single one of my signature scents that I've worn like for the past 20 odd years have had black currant in. So La Belle's Derici Liberty Fizz, um, that has black currant. YSL in Love Again, that has black currant. Boom, Green Tea and Cherry Bottom, that has black currant. Well, it, Tomato Leaf and Black Currant by Brocard, black currant. Um, it, they've, yeah, I, I, it's not something I'd really thought about, but I absolutely love black currant in perfume. So who knew? Um, not necessarily things that are predominantly black currant. But it, I can smell them in there. I thought for I thought it was going to be raspberry, but then when I looked at it, actually, generally it's blackcurrant. Although I do really like raspberry as well. Um, so, oh yeah. So, so the last one is a bit it's a bit tough because florals I'm a bit more random with. I re, I seem to really like ylang ylang, especially if it's bananary. But um, I think violet is probably the best represented out of the flowers. Uh, so. I think I've got more with violet in and that I recognize violet in that I that I really like um, than any other flower, I think. I've got quite a lot of rose perfumes, 
but they're not necessarily I don't necessarily love them as much as I love the violet ones I don't know it's kind of tricky um I've realized recently I absolutely love wisteria and lilac so I don't know maybe my tastes are just developing and changing but I think violet at the moment is probably the one I'd go for as like a safest one um but then I was thinking well maybe it's tonka because actually loads of perfumes I love have quite a lot of tonka in so uh yeah i don't know um that one's really tricky the first four were easy musk black currant sandalwood tea um but yeah it's kind of a toss-up between tonka and violet for the last one least favorite perfume notes is much easier because i have loads i'm um, fuss pot that's what my channel's called i'm fussy so i really hate patchouli i really don't like most jasmine perfumes i don't like a perfumey vanilla and broxen smells sharp and screechy on me um pink pepper often ruins perfumes for me um can be really fussy about neroli and orange blossom they can cause me real real problems um especially if they're too sweet and too syrupy uh peony often smells like super sharp to me and often i think that ruins perfumes for me as well i'm not really sure why um and of course there's that chemical that i was talking about earlier in the latafa and the zara perfumes it smells like tar i don't know what that is um a lot of perfumes with bamboo in must start to smell like bo on my skin which is really weird it like really gets a kind of horrible musky dirty body odor kind of smell when i've tried um perfumes with bamboo in so that's really really weird uh peach and strawberry are the two fruits that i think i'm the most fussy about but i do have perfumes with both in that i enjoy but i don't have many strawberry perfumes at all uh, i often find them a bit cloying and sickly and peach if it's really syrupy sometimes i really struggle with that depending on what it's mixed with peach and vanilla can be a real problem for me but again depends on how it's how it's uh, blended with the other things um, and two of my most hated perfumes, which are Livier Belle and Flower Bomb, they have jasmine, orange blossom, vanilla and patchouli. So they're both like a perfect storm for absolutely freaking me out. And like, you know, they're like they're everything that I don't enjoy in a perfume altogether and very strong. So I understand. I can understand why they're so popular, but they're just like a disaster for me. So what discontinued perfumes would I bring back? So um I, this was my signature scent of 16 years. This is La Belle Zerici Liberty Fizz. This is my saved bottle. It's probably like maybe 10 years old by now, if not older. Um, so this is the one. I mean, I wore this for my registry office bit of my wedding just because I wanted my husband to know what I would have, what I would probably smell like a lot of the time if I had the option. Um, so Nina Ricci, La Belle Zerici range. This is Liberty Fizz. They, But I also have... Um, let's have a look i would bring back this whole range to be honest so this is spicy delight um this one this is even older this is very old because as you can see basically um the the old la belle Cerici before it was changed to liberty fizz and actually even for a while after it was liberty fizz used to come in a in a bottle like this like a frosted green bottle with the pink lid uh, they changed it to glass um not that long before it was discontinued if i remember correctly um this one spicy delight oh there's it, it's like a kind of christmas cake spice i don't really know how to describe it it's weird um it's a really weird perfume but i used to think this was sexy and i used to wear this as my evening perfume if i went out and this was my um every day wear it every literally every day i wore it for 16 years i did have a few other perfumes that i wore for special occasions but this was my everyday 16 year perfume it's heaven. If you want to smell anything that smells even slightly like it, then Herbe from L'Occitane is like a honey, um, a sort of honeyed, more syrupy version of this. This is tomato leaf, black currant, uh, raspberry, musk, freesia. It is perfection for a sweet, fruity, green, fresh heavenly beautiful perfume i love it um so i'd bring back that whole range because they had one called almond dear more as well in the blue bottle um with i think with a green lid and that one was a really interesting slightly almondy they were just such good perfumes and they're like a lot of these are quite gourmand I, they do so well if they re-release them but i have hated every single nina ricci perfume since these were discontinued and i loved this whole range um but yeah i mean you know that's what I'd bring back. I'd bring back that whole range. 
uh let's see do you have a signature scent well yeah like i said if i was going to choose a signature scent it's this one because it's the one i wear more than anything else so it's skin scent perfume oil oil always the oil this is by parfum de cause um pdc brands uh so this is a little 15 ml bottle they cost about 10 pounds and they are a golden delicious musk uh i get these on fragrance x they deliver to the uk the cologne is useless and rubbish and it lasts for two seconds and it doesn't smell quite as nice i only had i bought that one just to kind of wear over the top but you don't need it this lasts all day i've had compliments from people working in shops who can smell me like from across the room when i've been wearing this it's just delicious it's my favorite thing in the world so that's that one and then last question best perfume on the opposite sex so i like anything fresh musky and unisex um i remember loving hugo boss in motion um back when i used to smell that when i was younger and uh i don't know the more masculine a scent is the less i like it on anyone so like my husband wears scents that i've given to him generally speaking and my favorites on him both have chocolate in them so one is aqua colonia this is blackberry and cocoa this is one that i got to try myself and i just thought it was a bit too woody and masculine but on him oh fruity sweet it's fresh and a bit watery but it still has that sweet cocoa in it so it's just beautiful but there's definitely like cedar wood or something in this that turns it a little bit too masculine for me to wear but he smells delicious in this and the other thing i just have to scream about i bought this one for myself hopefully you'll have seen my um uh, haul with this in where i talked about it this is unbreakable um, it's called Unbreakable Bond now, but I think when it was first out, it was just called Unbreakable. This is by Chloe and Lamar, the Kardashian woman and her now ex-husband. So a very breakable bond, but this is a perfume that has Mexican chocolate in it. I bought this one again to try. It's supposed to be unisex for me. It was literally like less than five quid for this massive bottle. Um, and it was, there's just something in it that made me feel like it was too masculine and i because there's chocolate I, I love the smell i love the smell i absolutely loved this smell and i thought right i'm gonna ask my husband if he likes it i'm gonna get him to spray it on i'm gonna sniff it see what i think and then if i like it i'm gonna see if he wants to keep it sprayed it on he smells like a king in this it is m so musky but it's that bar so it's like a it's like skin musk for men but with chocolate in it and i think there's some kind of fruit so there's a brightness i would say this is almost a little bit too musky for really hot weather but oh my god it lasts on him um really nicely and it lasts on his clothes all day he smells edible in this like even when it, when he goes for like uh, important meetings and stuff, I'm like, just put a little bit of this on because you are going to smell incredible. Um, I highly recommend this for men. Um, for women, only if you like things that are quite unisex, you know, quite leaning towards masculine maybe. But if you can get hold of this for a bargain and you want your husband to smell like sweet, musky, sexy skin, ho <laughs> ho i actually absolutely you just need to gobble him up so actually he absolutely adores me in skin musk which is um very similar to just them if you take the musk out of this this has this also has like if you know saruti 8088 1888 or if you know carolina herrera 212 the and also like modern princess by lonvin and jeanne by lonvin that kind of creamy bar soapy kind of musk is what they have in here but then with a mexican chocolate note oh my goodness it's just absolutely delicious i can't remember what the other notes in this are but oh, he is absolutely scrumptious in that and it's my favorite so he he will kind of he'll he'll say oh i sprayed some on for you and i'll go and have a sniff of him you know it's like just absolutely delicious so yeah it's um it's all got a bit dark in my bedroom now um but yeah so that's the last bit that's <laughs> that's my last bit of the question so um I don't expect any of the people that I actually tag to necessarily do it because I know that I've chosen people who probably, well, not only they might not have time, but they don't necessarily post all the time. So obviously I'd like to see um, a version of this by 
Ruth Ann McKinnon because I absolutely love her. If she has time to do it, that would be fantastic. Um, I'd love to see Mia Love Perfumes do this. I'd love to see Heart Notes do this. Um, I'd love to see the Perfume Lady do it, if that would be at all possible. Also, if Expanse Floating would like to do it, I'd really like to see what he has on his list. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it small, but um, I'll just oh oh and uh, Alia Devin. I hope I've, I've pronounced that right. So yeah, I'm I'm hopefully I'll see one or two of these, but don't feel under any pressure to do it because these I know these take quite a long long time. I hope Carmen, you found this um, entertaining, uh, and I as per usual, this is going to be a super long video because you know I just go on and on and on forever you know maybe i just like the sound of my own voice but uh, hopefully you like the sound of it too otherwise this will be an unbearable video all right guys i hope you enjoyed this it's really fun to do it and um i'll uh, i'll be back soon with with a totally different kind of video